Continuing Legal Education, BC Real Estate and Development Handbook. So I'd like you to, to welcome Jonathan Baker. The first caution I give you about what you're about to hear is, uh, is really was said by Mark Twain, uh, don't take too much from an experience. A cat that has jumped on a hot s stove will never do that again, nor will he jump on a cold one. So there are, there are lessons to be learned from what's happened, but times are different and it's not just the same. Uh, the team error in was is seen today as Vancouver's Camelot. And it was. Uh, to go back between 1966 and 72, Tom Campbell was mayor. And if you look at the, the NPA was a development-oriented party, but team was as well. They both had the same constituency, I think. And teams in the NPA's constituency simply got sick of what they were doing and they were looking for a place to park their road. Now, if you look at what Campbell did, uh, he was responsible for the development of Pacific Center. They wanted to run a freeway through Strathcona, which would have made a bit of a mess. They put the Bayshore in at the entrance of Stanley Park, which at the time upset a lot of people. Uh, they, uh, uh, one of the Bentall buildings, two Bentall centers they were involved with, they, he also, it was on his watch that they built the Centennial Museum, the Bloedel Conservatory, and the H.R. McMillan Planetarium. Um, he also saw some of the acquisition of the south side of False Creek. Now, that's over quite a period of time, but if you compare that to uh, the development that's been taking place under Vision, he was a mere piker. Yeah. Um, yeah. For a number of reasons, the NPA fell out of favor not the least of which was development related, uh, <clears throat> but that wasn't the only one. Team consisted of an extremely capable group of academics and professionals and community activists. They were generally uh, middle of the road. Uh, in the first election, in 1968, Art Phillips uh, got elected on a recount, along with, and Walter Harvard was elected. And then they got the majority uh, and that consisted of Mae Brown, Marguerite Ford, Darlene, Mike Harcourt, and uh, Seti Pendiker, and Fritz Bowers. Um, and Jeff Massey. And, and yes, yes, it just goes to show. <laughs> <laughs> so, <clears throat> it's, the council is remembered for a series of initiatives that set the tone for the next 40 years. And it's, still shines as a beacon today. First of all, they introduced flexibility into the planning and design process. Uh, they, planning became neighborhood-based. Cultural institutions flourished, including the Vancouver East Cultural Center, uh, the Academy of Music, the Contemporary Art Gallery, the Children's Festival, heritage areas were, and heritage policies were developed by them. The Orpheum Theater was created. The bureaucracy was overhauled. And let me say this, that they, they had, the city all had a very good bureaucracy. They had good staff. Today, it is a mess. And I think that's been caused by the, uh, by the, by the present council. But they had a, a, a capable uh, bureaucracy. It just wasn't moving in the direction they wanted, they wanted to see it move. Um, now, to give a flavor of this, I attended a zoning hearing back in 1968 to consider the rezoning of the CPR lands at Arbutus and King Edward. And Mayor Tom Campbell was in the chair. He looked out across a large auditorium in Prince of Wales School. It was packed, standing room only. He I remember very clearly. He looked at it, he smiled, and he said, it's a sellout. Now, in the, back of the in the back of the auditorium was David Hardwick, the brother of Walter. And David was known for two things. He was a truly great pediatric surgeon, and he was the best heckler I've ever seen. And so David shouted back, hey, Tom, it was a sellout before the meeting. 
And that's what I think people feel today about what's going on. They feel that there is a, a sellout. And, but I think a much worse kind of sellout than, than, than was occurring at that time. Now, there are differences. Uh, I was at the team headquarters on election night, and um, as the results came in, someone walked up to the blackboard and wrote a name on it. And the name was not Phillips, it was not Hardwick, it was not Marzari or Ford, it was Alan Fotheringham. <laughs> and the reason they wrote Alan Fotheringham was that he was very much responsible for the defeat of the NPA. He relentlessly went after them for a year. There's nothing like that in the media today. All the newspapers are virtually broke. And we now have social media, but it's not the same thing. There isn't... There, with social media, you can read what you want to read and ignore what you don't like. But in those days, you had Fotheringham and, other, and, and a number of investigative journalists who were on, it, on the case every day. And I think that, has, that has, makes it somewhat more difficult to achieve the kind of uh, results. Well, it has to be done differently uh, than it was done then. Now, the city, the, the, the first, the, the, the very first thing the city did was, uh, I think it was the first thing, but they, they put in an information desk at the entrance to the city hall. Well, did that came, they came first. Well, let's talk about the firing then of the city manager. The, the city had a the, the city had a very actually brilliant manager. It was called it was called the board of administration. There were two of them. There was an engineer named Warren Ryan, and uh, and then there was Gerald Sutton Brown, who was a British planner, and uh, he was he was a thoroughly competent guy. He just, uh, however, was an autocrat. He was a very imperious gentleman, and he ran the department top down, and the planner was really under his uh, thumb. And um, he, um, today, of course, the city manager makes Sutton Brown look like a liberal. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, she's, she's not a micromanager, she's a nanomanager. <laughs> she is in every detail of, of everything that's going on. Uh, so Sun Brown was fired, and uh, the curious thing is, and the, the moral of that story is, that it ain't over until it's over, because what happened, he was promptly hired by Mobile Oil, and became head of their massive real estate branch, and he planned new cities all over the world, and he told me, I run into him a couple years later, or a while later, and he said that it was the best thing that ever, ever happened to him. Uh, when Art Phillips retired, uh, I pr wrote a poem for him, and uh, here was the first three verses were this. Remember the day you deposed Sutton Brown, the word spread like measles all over the town. You were quite ruthless to make him step down. How could you do this to that helpless old toothless? But as it turned out, his career didn't spoil. He was hired to plan towns for mobile oil. He travels to places wherever it's sunny. The way it turned out, it was funny. You never can tell, you never can tell what wonderful fortunes can spring from the well of natural disasters that turn out quite swell. Till the end, you never can tell. And I think that's the truth in politics. You don't know. Uh, you, you really don't know how things are going to work out until time goes by. The, the symbol, though, of the new team council was the information desk at the front. Before, in, before the team came in, going to City Hall was, was as it is now, a Kafkaesque experience. You, you didn't know where you were, were going. You couldn't find where you were going. The offices didn't have receptionists. And you didn't know what to do when you got there. So they put in an information desk and people can suddenly realize what they had to do to pay their, where they had to go to pay their taxes. That's called transparency. 
And transparency is a virtue, but it's not the virtue that vision is best at. They also brought in local area planning, and I'm sure uh, Darlene will say something about that, uh, it, but it was central to the, to the change. Uh, in, in vision, uh, what they do, they appoint a group of their friends, and they may be capable people, uh, doesn't, but that's irrelevant. Uh, they are not attached to the neighborhoods for which they're planning. And it doesn't work. It produces terrible results. And we've seen terrible results so far. Um, one thing that's happened is that team ascended to power under, there was a two-party system. Now there is not a two-party system unless NSV can pull us out of where we are. There's a one-party system. The NPA and uh, uh, the NPA and uh, vision are really two cheeks of one butt. <laughs> another, thing that's happened, another thing that's happened is that there were two-year terms in those days. So the, the politicians had to be pretty close to the constituents. Actually, before that, there were one-year terms. And then in the 90s, they changed it to three-year three terms. Now, the public didn't demand to be deprived of a vote every, three, every two years. This was done by local politicians right across the province. It was a terrible mistake. It's the worst mistake that could have been made, made structurally. And I don't see any prospect for the, it's, it's a provincial law, and I don't see any prospect for the province uh, changing it. So those are my, those are my comments. I think that there's a lot to be learned. There's a lot of hope in the fact that a group like these guys will be cursed. I think that's inevitable. Uh, people are now on to them, and you know they'll be hanging by a slender thread for the next two years. But how it's to be done and who is going to do it, I certainly hope that this organization can step into the breach and pull it off. Thanks.